Well, here we are back again. Now we've got some understanding of what paradigms are. We know that if you know how to get to where you're going, you're probably going in the wrong direction. You're not going after what you want. See, the beautiful thing about goals is that they're, it's, it's a forever, never ending experience. You're going on a journey. You're always going where you've never been. That's what life is about. Life is an exciting adventure. It should never be a bore. And it can be, but only if you follow the right rules. Now I'm betting that you went and sat down again at the table and you picked up your dream and you've itemized it. I am so happy and grateful now that. Now that you've done that, there's a little internal war going to start going on. Because you see, the paradigm is there in your subconscious mind. It controls your vibration, therefore it controls your actions. Now there was a doctor, I'm going to digress for a moment, and I'm going to share something with you that I consider the, the most phenomenal idea that I have ever learned. I had been studying this material for a good nine years, trying to figure out, you know, why was I winning? I, I was winning, but I didn't know why. And you know something, most people that are winning don't know why. Then I was what you call an unconscious competent. I was competent, but I didn't know why I was. I was winning, but I didn't know why. Therefore, I had something that was non-transferable. You're going to become a conscious competent, and you're going to know why you're winning, and therefore you can share it with your kids, your family, your friends. That's the beautiful part about this. Now, I have to take you back to the year 1934, long time ago, you've got to admit. There was a doctor by the name of Thruman Fleet in San Antonio, Texas, and he was actually appalled at the state of the healing arts. He said, you know, we're not going about this. We're not doing this right. He said, we're treating the symptoms of disease. We're not treating disease at all. When you operate on the body or you, you're asking them, you know, how do you feel? You're treating symptoms. You're not treating the cause of problems. And he said, everything originates in the mind. U.S. Anderson wrote one time, when we fully realize that thought causes all, we'll know there's never any limits. We ourselves do not impose. It starts inside. He said, we've got to heal the, heal the body, mind, and the soul. We've got to heal the whole person. And he said, nobody's ever seen the mind, ever. The mind is not a thing. Now, most people, when they think of the mind, they actually think of the brain. You might be doing that right now, but that is not the mind. See, the brain is part of the body, a very important part of the body. In fact, that's where the electrical control system is set up for your entire being. This body is a magnificent machine. It's controlled by the mind that sets off the central control system we call a nervous system. Do you know that your nervous system, the electrical system in your body, would make the electrical system in a supercomputer look like a toy? Now, when I get into this, you may think, oh, God, I'm never going to learn all that. You don't have to learn all that. I just want to lay some basics for you to help you understand what I'm going to tell you. And Fleet said, if we're going to help people, we've got to have a picture of the mind. So he said, this is a picture of the mind. Now, I think that's the greatest idea I've ever learned. That's called the stick person. And you'll see the big circle at the top has a line right through the center. On the top half of the line is the conscious mind. And on the bottom half is the subconscious mind. Now, the subconscious mind and the conscious mind working together express themselves through that small circle in the bottom that we call the body. The body is the instrument of the mind. Before the body does something, it has to happen in the mind. We're working from a higher to a lower potential. There's a power flowing to and through us that has no limits. The only limit placed on the power is the limit that's placed on the form through which it's flowing. It's something like electricity. Look at a light bulb for a moment. That is not electricity. That's the expression of electricity. See, the only limit placed on electricity is the limit that's placed on the form through which it's flowing, namely the transformer or the bulb. If you want more light, put in a bigger bulb. Well, if we want more action, plug in a bigger idea. 
Now he said, this drawing represents the mind. The top half represents the conscious mind. The bottom half represents the subconscious mind. And the small circle represents the body. Now I'm going to take the conscious mind off for a minute. Now you just have the subconscious. That is how you arrived on the scene. Your subconscious mind was wide open. Your subconscious mind has no ability to reject anything. Whatever you turn over to it, it will accept. You see, as a little baby, you arrive on the scene like that. That's how language is learned. That's how you pick up all the idiosyncrasies of the people around you. Now, there was genetic conditioning prior to you arriving on the scene. That's why you look so much like your relative. But then you arrive, you learn the language of the people that surround you. If there's four or five languages spoken around you, you'd learn all four or five languages. There's many places in the world where babies learn four or five languages before they even go to kindergarten. But as you start to get towards time to go to school, the psychic barrier starts to come up and the conscious faculties begin to develop. And that's when you start thinking for yourself. But you see, what to think has already been programmed. See that X in the subconscious mind with the puffy little cloud around it? That's the paradigm. And of course, that puts the body in an X-type vibration. Now there's a power flowing into your consciousness. It never stops. And as the power flows in, you build ideas. And what kind of ideas do you build? X-type ideas. Why? Because they're in harmony with the paradigm. If you start to think thoughts that are not in harmony with the paradigm, it causes quite a bit of discomfort. Now think, if you've never jumped out of a plane, go up in a plane and contemplate jumping out of it. You'll start to feel very uncomfortable. You see, it's not an X idea. It's not an X idea. Now, it could be that you get involved with that, but not as long as you're thinking X type ideas. Now, do you see, your life to this point has been controlled by a paradigm, and so you've been thinking thoughts that are in harmony with the paradigm. That is why we keep getting the same results over and over and over again. There's, there's, no, there's no secret to this. It's predictable. If you watch people, you'll watch how they move. They, they, there's habit patterns being expressed, behavioral patterns, that's producing the same result. Now, let's move this ahead. I call that state bondage. Now we're going to move ahead and we're going to move into a state that I call reason. Remember I said that power flows in and you can make anything out of it you want? Well, there's a why idea floating out there. What is the why idea? The why idea may sell the house and move to another country. The why idea may quit the job, start your own business. The why idea may bet everything you've got on yourself and your ability to start and build a business. That why idea is one scary little sucker. But you know something? As long as you keep it in your conscious mind and just think about it, everything's cool. And you see, while, the, while your dream was on the table, everything was fine. It's something you looked at every now and then. You were capable of seeing it and thinking it, but you never really got emotionally involved with it. That's why it stayed on the table. The idea came to your mind off and on, but it slipped through your fingers. And that's what happens with most people. Success is slipping through their fingers. It lands and lays and stays on the table. What we want to do is turn that idea over to that power inside. Now, what happens when we do that? Well, let's stop and think of what I said. I said the X energy in the paradigm controls the vibration. Now, on a conscious level, vibration is referred to as feeling. You'll probably want to watch this maybe four or five times because it probably is foreign information. And as you watch it four or five times, you'll say, damn, that makes so much sense. And it really does because it's the truth about what we're doing. Well, the X energy causes us to vibrate the way we're vibrating. And if somebody says, how do you feel? You'll say, pretty good. Or I don't feel too good. What you're really saying is, I'm in a great vibration or I'm in a not in a very good vibration. What happens when you're not in a very good vibration? You're emotionally involved in a negative idea. See, your subconscious is your emotional mind. Now, if you go to turn that why idea over to the subconscious mind, which is what you have to do if you're going to act on it, all hell breaks loose. Now, look at this. 
When you do that, when you take the why idea and you turn it over, you're going to find that worry, fear, anxiety strike, bang! A terror barrier pops up and you bounce off that terror barrier and you go right back into bondage. And you're like, oh God, I, I don't really want to do that. I mean, I don't need all that money. And I'd have all those income tax problems. And, 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 and besides, I don't want to have the responsibility of a company. Uh, I may not earn much here, but I feel safe here. That's what keeps most people where they are. You see, the worry is on a conscious level. You worry you're not going to put it all together. Remember, you can't see the results. You can't see how you're going to do it. And that worry instantly turns into fear. You impress worry, and it turns into fear. Now, whatever's impressed must be expressed, and it turns into anxiety. Now, in a future lesson, I'm going to show you where it goes from there. But for the benefit of this lesson, you don't like to stay in an anxious state. And a terror barrier bounces up, and you bounce right off the damn thing, and you go right back into bondage. Have you any idea how many people do that? Have you any idea how many people are doing it today that are just about a nine iron away from your, where you're sitting? Your friends, your relatives, people that are absolutely brilliant, and you'll look and you'll say, you could do that without any trouble. You're so smart. We think they can, but we can't. Do you want to know something? You're every bit as smart. All the knowledge there ever was or ever will be is locked up within you. Now think about what I'm saying. All science and all theology, the only two sources of reference we've got to go to, tell us that we've got deep reservoirs of talent and ability within us. We're spiritual beings, and our spiritual DNA is perfect. There's perfection within us, and spirit's always seeking expansion and fuller expression. There's something in you that wants to express itself in a greater way. There's something in you that wants you to reach, that wants you to stretch, that wants you to get out and do something. But that terror barrier, boom! Every time you think of doing it, it scares the daylights out of you. See, the XY energy doesn't mix. It's opposing energy. It sets up a foreign vibration, and it causes a very uncomfortable feeling. I want you to think of this for a moment. I want you to imagine that maybe we're at the end of the road, the two of us. We may be buddies, but we're at the end of the road. Now, you know when you get to the end of the road, if you're here for a long time, you could end up where your mind is as sharp as a tack, but the body just isn't cutting it. And they may have us tied in a wheelchair so we don't fall out, or in a crib bed, because there's no strength in the body. It's depleted, but our mind is sharp. And so all we got to do is sit there. Wouldn't it be a terrible thing to reflect back on all those dreams we left on the table? Wouldn't it be a terrible thing to sit there and say, I wonder what would have happened if we had to move there? I wonder what would have happened if I had built that company? I wonder what would have happened, but I can't go back. If only I could go back and do it again if I had known just how short life really is, if only. Wouldn't it be much better to sit there and relive all the big moves we made? Even the big losses would be exhilarating to relive them. Wouldn't it be wonderful to go back and relive the dreams that we conquered? Oh my goodness, I think that would be great. Well, you see, you've got a choice and you can go crashing right through that terror barrier. Joseph Campbell said, the cave we fear to enter holds the treasure that we seek. Now, you see, you've got it within you to just say, I'm going for it. See, on the other side of the terror barrier is freedom. And you know that's what we seek? If you go to Washington, D.C. in the United States of America and go visit the Korean Wall, in honor of all the Americans that lost their life in Korea. You will see carved into granite, freedom is not free. You don't have to know how to get there, and you don't have to have a plan. 
Martin Luther King didn't have a plan. He said, I have a dream. You see what I'm saying? You just have to know the first step of action that's necessary. That's all you have to know. You gotta have guts. And you know something, the more understanding you have, the more guts you will have. When you go crashing through that terror barrier, the fear doesn't leave, the uncomfortable doesn't leave, but through the repetition of impressing the why idea over and over and over, it eventually leaves. And you build a new paradigm. And then you start the same journey over, but you're starting it from a different place. Where you started here, now you're starting up here. And you've got all the experience. Personally, when I set a goal, if it doesn't scare the daylights out of me, I know it's no good. Now, I don't want to waste my time because I know that there's only so much. I don't know how much there is, but I want the time to count. I want to know exactly what I'm doing. I want to know exactly where I'm going, and I want every day to be an exciting adventure. Now think, how do you really want to live? Do you want to leave those dreams on the table? Is that really what you want to do? Do you want to get to the end of the road and reflect and say, damn, if only I had known? Well, now you do know. Now, it doesn't matter if anybody else knows. I know, and you know, and you and I can become connected. You don't have to let your dreams slip through your fingers. You don't have to let them lay on the table. And you know the beautiful part about it is? Neither do your friends or your relatives or your kids. Do you realize when you learn this, you've got something that's transferable that you can give to their children and the breed will just improve to no end? No one in my family ever went to school. So when I was 15 or 16, they said, are you going? No, I'm out of here. That was accepted. That was part of the paradigm. I started to study this material for any of my, before any of my children were born. I didn't ask them if they were going to go. I just changed one question. Where are you going to go? Do you know something? They all went to school. Isn't that strange? It's so strange. Now you may wonder whether your friends and relatives and neighbors are going to accept you. Probably not at first. They'll think you're a little crazy. But Edison's relatives thought that. The Wright brothers thought that. Hillary's brothers and sisters thought that. I went to dinner with my sister and her husband and my wife's sister and Gina and her husband on my birthday here just two or three weeks ago. And my sister and I are, we're very loving, but we're not really close. She's very busy running a business and I am. My brother and I, he's in Southern California, I'm in Toronto. So although we, we stay in touch and you know, we love each other, we don't spend a lot of time together. We're very busy reaching our own goals. And Helen said, Al and I sat in Florida and we talked about you. And we talked about the change that's taken place in our family since you picked up Think and Grow Rich. And we realized none of us, our kids, no one would be living the life we're living if you hadn't gone for that goal, Bob. And she and Al had a plaque made and engraved. And they gave it to me for my 79th birthday. Said they were going to do it on my 80th, but they thought, no, we better do it now. <laughs> I said, what do you think I'm checking out? And I phoned my brother in Southern California. I was in Toronto, and I was thanking him for it. He said, you know, yesterday was the 4th of July, Bob, and all the kids and all the grandkids and everybody was here. And I read them what was on the plaque that Helen was going to be giving you. And I told them none of them would be enjoying the life they were enjoying if you hadn't stepped out and bet on yourself. I felt so good. My sister said, you know, my kids wouldn't be doing what they're doing. Her young daughter, Carolyn, came to seminars and she was just a little kid. And she made up her mind she wanted to be a lawyer and she wanted to be a judge. She is a Supreme Court judge in Canada today. Her son runs a multi-million dollar business that my sister and her husband started. You have no idea who you're impacting. You have no idea how many people are watching you. They thought I was crazy. But when they saw I wasn't, they started to follow me. You go, they'll come. You've got more power in you than you'll ever use. 
God's gift to you is more talent and ability than you'll ever use in your lifetime. Your gift to God is to develop as much of that talent and ability as you can in this time, lifetime. Never let the terror barrier stop you. You go up against it and you crash right through it. That's why I'm here. I'm here to grow. Goals are not to get. Goals are to grow. The getting is just a side benefit. And remember everything you own at the time of your death is going to belong to somebody else. You never own it. So don't ever let it own you. But don't sit back. Step out. Bet on yourself. Build that dream and go for it. Now you watch this. You watch this video. You watch all these videos you've received. You get very involved in this program that we're laying out. And you will come up with results that stick and so will your brothers and sisters and family and friends. Because they're watching you. I'll support you. The Proctor Gallagher Institute is here for one person. To help people do what we've done. Thank you.